Hi, I'm Maggie O'Halloran. I'm here in my garden in Central Florida and we're going to talk about Vitex or Chaseberry or Chase Tree. Another common name is Monk's Pepper. Um, it's a beautiful plant that um, we can grow here in Central Florida. It is uh, right now we are in my backyard in Central Florida, right outside of the city of Orlando. And I'm Maggie O'Halloran. I'm one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living. And this is my backyard herbal, urban oasis that some people like to call it. Be sure to comment below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them while we're chatting now in Facebook Live. And if you're watching via YouTube, go ahead and ask questions there and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thanks for being in my garden with me today. Let's get started. So, Vitex, Chased Berry, Agnes, Vitex Agnes Castus. Here's a picture of this beautiful shrub that will grow from zones four through nine. Um, in the more northern climates, your growing season might not be long enough for you to get these beautiful purple flowers that will turn into lovely berries um, around the time that fall rolls around. And the berry is the part of the plant we'll really be talking about today. But before I jump into that, I just wanted to show you another picture of this beautiful shrub that can get uh, up to 10 feet in height, but you can see that it grows really uh, bushy. So a lot of the flowers are on the outside edges and it can get up to 10 feet in diameter as well. In my Florida gardening book um, that focuses more on working with uh, plants and more of a traditional sense of working in your yard. If you're thinking about permaculture, the Vitex can be really nice in, in the permaculture landscape. It likes a good amount of sun, um, but you can see it gets up to 10 to 12 feet in height and uh, 10 to 12 feet in width. Um, it's often seen in North or Central Florida, like I said, down to, to zone nine typically. But in 9B here, it seems to be pretty happy. Um, those flowers range from, you know, a blue listed here or that more purple that you saw in the other photos. Um, in the summer is when it's really beautiful with all those flowers. And it likes sun, and I know that it can, it can be happy in part sun as well. But Chase Tree, Vitex Agnes Castus is that botanical name. It's in Lamiaceae family, so that mint family. Some of its common names are Chase Tree or Chased Berry. You'll see it listed as Chase Tree or Chase Berry um, in commerce, uh, both in the medical formulation variety as well as um, the botanical names that um, you want to make sure that you're getting that Vitex Agnes Cassis and if you go to your local landscaping store and find Chase Tree or Chase Berry it's probably the same plant you just want to make sure that that's what you're getting. It got that common name Chase um, which we don't commonly use anymore. I typically just use the word Vitex because it was known to be used through uh, all of the, Russia, uh, the Roman Empire for monks and monasteries, monks pepper, chased berry, um, as a way to curb libido. As you might imagine, um, a bunch of guys living all together, that might be helpful to be able to um, balance out the hormones and support health and vitality and the situation that they were in. And it was used as a spice. So Vitex berry, which is what we're talking about today, Vitex berry, is peppery. It's a little spicy. So back then, and through a lot of time, it's been used as a spice. And we'll talk a little bit more about that closer to the end of this video. But I wanted to talk about how it's considered a hormone regulator. 
in both my book here, Deb Sewell is the author, The Woman's Handbook of Healing Herbs. And you can find these um, in any of your bookstore, commerce, places. Um, I'll, I'll post the link to the name of the book in the comments below or in our uh, info box in YouTube. But it's the berry that we're talking about. And this berry is often used as a hormone regulator. And I'm going to put hormone regulator in quotes because really what it has, its main actions now that we have resources of the scientific studies is that it supports the estrogen progesterone imbalances specifically in women and sometimes those can um, imbalances there can mean heavy bleeding or erratic cycles uh, painful periods or amenorrhea like the period is just no longer coming and that could be a part of perimenopause, which is a natural uh, evolution that the, the body goes through for people who have a uterus. But it can also mean there's an imbalance of some kind. And that hormonal imbalance term is because it helps that balance between estrogen and progesterone, specifically in the luteal phase for people that have ovaries. A correction in the imbalance there can help with things like fertility, um, make irregular periods more regular. It can also alleviate some experiences of cramps. Herbalists for a long time have been incorporating Vitex as part of a protocol for um, menopause, things like hot flashes or other physical manifestations of a potential imbalance. But what we have to remember is that not everyone's the same. And so some of these experiences could mean a lot of different things in the body. In a lot of my natural mama groups, Chase Tree or Vitex tincture is called the baby making tincture. You know, if you're having trouble conceiving, it can really help with fertility. And that's really true for some people sometimes just getting a little bit of support and balancing out that luteal phase can really help with conceiving raising the progesterone levels things like that can support that but uh, for other people it can cause things like extra heavy menstrual cycles or uh, decrease in libido. So you definitely want to be mindful in your use of this plant and make sure that you're talking to your um, medical provider uh, or midwife about any ideas that you have about working with this plant and make sure that you're using it in a way that's going to be helpful for you. Because if you're having extra heavy periods, it might mean that um, this isn't the plant that is going to be helpful. So Comment below questions, are you using this plant? Do you have experiences? For other people, it can be great as a libido balancer as well. So monk's pepper or chase tree, this plant or this berry can be helpful in balancing out um, that experience in the world, either increasing libido or decreasing if I'm utilizing it and decreasing libido is not an aim, then I'm going to stop using it and try some other things. If you decide to incorporate Vitex into your life, it's generally recommended that you have two milliliters of a tincture in the morning for about three months. You definitely don't want to use it if you are um, on some type of other hormonal birth control. You want to avoid chase tree or Vitex. And Vitex is often recommended to start at th on the first day of your cycle and take it throughout your cycle for up to three months and then see how it feels. A lot of herbalists have talked about this. Sometimes in the uh, medical literature, you'll see different studies on this. In this book by uh, Ruth Tricky, the 
herbal protocol that I just suggested with one to three cycles comes directly from there and a couple of other resources have generally considered that to be the way to incorporate Vitex into your life. So how do you use Vitex? So a lot of the herbs that I grow in my garden or have around are plants that are really nice in tea or um, tea blends. This is not necessarily a plant that I use in that way. So Vitex is this wonderful berry. And when I say berry, you might hear like blueberry or something like that, but it really, especially when it's dry, is really hard. It's actually more of a pepper corn experience when you're working with Vitex berry. This is dried. You, it is okay to use Vitex either fresh or dried, but it is ha, does have this harder outer shell. So if you do plan to use it in a tea blend, make sure you're decocting it. So you're adding it one to three teaspoons into your water per cup on the stove and you're letting it simmer for about 20, 15 to 20 minutes and then incorporating it into your life that way. Like I said, it has this peppery flavor. So one of the ways that I incorporate Vitex or Chase Tree into my life when it seems appropriate is by putting it in a pepper grinder. So it works with any of these store-bought pepper grinders that you get. And sometimes at the grocery store, they even have the, these glass bottles and you can use some of the pepper out and you can add those Vitex berries to it. And it's a little bit harder to monitor how much you're taking in. But if you just wanna incorporate this plant into your life, that can be a really fun way is have it, adding it to your pepper grinder that you already have and get that nice Vitex chase tree um, into your life. Another more common way that I incorporate it is by tincture. So the pepper grinder is great because food is medicine, let medicine be your food. And if you're already eating really healthy, nourishing things, and you're adding a little hormone balancer onto that nourishment, it can be really nice. Another way if I want to be more thoughtful or aware of how much I'm incorporating into my life, I'll make a tincture. And a tincture is a concentrated herbal extract. It is really simple to make. Um, there are lots of different instructions and videos on making tinctures specifically, but in the herbalist tradition that I studied under or learned about, um, there's the simplers method. So in this method, it's simple because I often use one plant, but it's also simple because I'm not measuring. So some ways of making a tincture, you're measuring and you might notice on prepared tincture bottles, numbers that say things like dry herb to menstruum ratio one to four. So that's one part dry herb to four parts menstruum, and the menstruum is the liquid. So this tincture is in alcohol. That's a really common menstruum for making a tincture. You can also use vinegar or glycerin if you're trying to avoid alcohol in your life. And each of these menstruums are going to extract different aspects, but Vitex has a long history of being extracted in vinegar. So you could make a Vitex vinegar tincture to have easier access and be able to get a sense of how much of that concentrated herbal extract you're getting into your life. Or you could use the Vitex or peppery tasting vinegar um, in a similar way that you would use other vinegars. Just be mindful of those potential uh, hormone balancing qualities. So whenever I'm making a tincture using whichever menstruum you want, alcohol or vinegar or that glycerin and the alcohol you want it to be at least 70 percent alcohol because that's 
the amount of alcohol it's going to take for it to really um, keep the cooties out, you know, not allow for extra things to grow. And 70% alcohol could mean that it's 140 proof. So I misspoke. What I meant to say was that it needs to be 40% alcohol. That means 80 proof. So 40% alcohol is what you need. And whenever it says 40% alcohol, that means it's 60% water. So 40% alcohol is what you need to make sure that it doesn't grow funky things. And that's often um, the amount of alcohol that you need to extract the alcohol extractable constituents in a plant. The plant is full of all kinds of different things and when you are extracting you have to think about you know what is this alcohol or this water going to take out of the plant. So the water is going to extract some of the things that you want. Vinegar will also do that. So I'm typically I'm a little under a half but generally I'm thinking with dried plant material I'm going to fill up my jar halfway to make a tincture. This is a tincture. So to make the tincture I filled up the jar about halfway with the dried plant material and remember I'm leaving lots of space for that to expand. Whenever it's dried plant material it's really gonna expand and fill up the jar. Once I add the liquid and let it sit for a few days you'll really be able to see how much that um, those berries have expanded. I'm filling it up with my menstruum, alcohol, vinegar, and I'm filling it up within an inch of the top. So it's not an inch of the little rim that would be seen at the bottom of my lid. I'm filling it from within an inch of the actual top of my jar. Your goal with making tinctures is making sure you have as little air space as possible because air is where the it can get contaminated with all kinds of stuff that you don't want in your tincture. So make sure that you're filling it up as much as possible. Then I would put the lid on, label it, and shake it every day for six weeks. And then I strain it and I'll have a tincture. That's how this tincture is made. Your, it was plant material with a menstruum and it went through a process to extract the, plant, the constituents I wanted and then the plant material was taken out and now it's in a bottle that I can see how much I'm taking in every day. Sometimes they come with uh, markers on the dropper part or they say roughly 20 drops per dropper full and you can monitor it that way. I like to, when I first have a tincture in a bottle, I like to measure the quantity that I'm hoping to take and see what it looks like from the dropper bottle so I'm not measuring it every time. And it may be that this dropper bottle, to get my two milliliters, I might need two of these dropper full, or it might be three, but that way I'll know so whenever I'm using it in my life, I know exactly how much I need. Make sure you ask questions, drop comments. Anybody growing Vitex? Do you enjoy those beautiful purple flowers that the pollinators love? This Mediterranean plant that really enjoys our Florida sandy soil and is completely happy in full sun or part sun most of the year here in Central Florida. Vitex, known as the hormone balancer. Make sure you're talking to um, your medical provider before you add any new herbs into your life to make sure there's no contraindications. The known contraindications on this one are hormonal birth control and any other condition that might um, be influenced by estrogen or progesterone levels in your body. Vitex does a really nice job of balancing for certain people and then for others not so much so make sure to do more research and grow this beautiful plant especially if you are in a more temperate environment so you get those purple flowers 
a lot more of the year. The pollinators will appreciate you. If there are no questions, uh, thank you for joining me in my garden and I hope you come back for the next plant and we'll see you then.